Numbers chapter 6. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If a man or woman wants to make a special vow, a vow of dedication to the Lord as a Nazarite, they must abstain from wine and other fermented drink and must not drink vinegar made from wine or other fermented drink. They must not drink grape juice or eat grapes or raisins. As long as they remain under their Nazarite vow, they must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, not even the seeds or skins. During the entire period of their Nazarite vow, no razor may be used on their head. They must be holy until the period of their dedication to the Lord is over. They must let their hair grow long. Throughout the period of their dedication to the Lord, the Nazarite must not go near a dead body. Even if their own father or mother or brother or sister dies, they must not make themselves ceremonially unclean on account of them. Because the symbol of their dedication to God is on their head. Throughout the period of their dedication, they are consecrated to the Lord. If someone dies suddenly in the Nazarite's presence, thus defiling the hair that symbolises their dedication, they must shave their head on the seventh day, the day of their cleansing. Then, on the eighth day, they must bring two doves or two young pigeons to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting. The priest is to offer one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering to make atonement for the Nazarite because they sinned by being in the presence of a dead body. That same day, they are to consecrate their head again. They must, dedica- they must rededicate themselves to the Lord for the same period of dedication and must bring a year-old male lamb as a guilt offering. The previous days do not count because they became defiled during their period of dedication. Now this is the law of the Nazarite. When the period of their dedication is over, they are to be brought to the entrance to the tent of meeting. There they are to present their offerings to the Lord. A year old male lamb without defect for a burnt offering. A year old ewe lamb without defect for a sin offering a ram without defect for a fellowship offering. Together with their rain offerings, with their grain offerings and drink offerings and a basket of bread made from, with the finest flour and without yeast, thick loaves with olive oil mixed in and thin loaves brushed with olive oil. The priest is to present all these before the Lord and make the sin offering and the burnt offering. He is to present the basket of unleavened bread and is to sacrifice the ram as a fellowship offering to the Lord, together with its grain offering and drink offering. Then, at the entrance to the tent of meeting, the Nazarite must shave off the hair that symbolises their dedication. They are to take the hair and put it in the fire that is under the sacrifice of a fellowship offering. After the Nazarite has shaved off the hair that symbolises their dedication, the priest is to place in their hands a boiled shoulder of the ram and one thick loaf and one thin loaf from the basket, both made without yeast. The priest shall then wave these before the Lord as a wave offering. They are holy and belong to the priest, together with the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. After that, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who vows offerings to the Lord in accordance with their dedication, in addition to whatever else they can afford. They must fulfil the vows they have made according to the law of the Nazarite. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Chapter 7 When Moses finished setting up the tabernacle, he anointed and consecrated it and all its furnishings. He also anointed and consecrated the altar and all its utensils. Then the leaders of Israel, the heads of families who were the tribal leaders in charge of those who were counted, made offerings. They brought us their gifts before the Lord six covered carts and twelve oxen, an ox from each leader and a cart from every two. These they presented before the tabernacle. The Lord said to Moses, Accept these from them that they may be used in the work at the tent of meeting. Give them to Levites as each man's work requires. 
So Moses took the carts and oxen and gave them to the Levites. He gave two carts and four oxen to the Gershonites as their work requires. And he gave four carts and eight oxen to the Merarites as their work required. They were all under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the priest. But Moses did not give any to the Kohathites because they were to carry on their shoulders the holy things for which they were responsible. When the altar was anointed, the leaders brought their offerings for its dedication and presented them before the altar. For the Lord had said to Moses, each day one leader is to bring his offering for the dedication of the altar. The one who brought his offering on the first day was Narshon, son of Aminadab of the tribe of Judah. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, one gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram and one male lamb of a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering and two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Nashon, son of Aminadab. On the second day, Nathanael, son of Zuar, the leader of Issachar, brought his offering. The offering he brought was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels, filled with incense, one young bull, one ram and one la male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Nathanael, son of Zuar. On the third day, Eliab, son of Helen, the leader of the people of Zebulun, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram and one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering and two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Eliab, son of Helen. On the fourth day, Eliza, son of Shedur, the leader of the people of Reuben, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing ten shekels, filled with incense. One young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering and two oxen. Five rams, five male goats and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Eliza, son of Shedur. On the fifth day... Shalumiel, son of Zuri Shaddai, the leader of the people of Simeon, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram and one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old, to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Shalumiel, son of Zuri Shaddai. On the sixth day, Eliasaph, son of Duel, the leader of the people of Gad brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with some olive oil as a grain offering. 
one gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering and two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Eliasaph, son of Jewel. On the seventh day, Eli Shama, son of Amihud, the, the leader of the people of Ephraim, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel. Each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old, to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Elishama, son of Amihud. On the eighth day, Gamaliel, son of Pedazur, the leader of the people of Manasseh, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel. Each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense. One young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering and one male goat for a sin offering. And two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as fellowship offering. This was the offering of Gamaliel, son of Pedahazur. On the ninth day, Abidan, son of Gideonai, the leader of the people of Benjamin, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, one gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense. One young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering and two oxen. Five rams, five male goats and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Abidan, son of Gideonai. <clears throat> On the 10th day, Ahiza, son of Am 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 Amishadai, the leader of the people of Dan brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one, la one young bull, one ram and one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering and two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Ahiza, son of Amishadai. On the eleventh day, Pagiel, son of Okran, the leader of the people of Asher, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense. One young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering and two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Pagiel, son of Okran. On the twelfth day, Ahira, son of Enan, the leader of the people of Naphtali, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels. Filled with incense. One young bull, one ram and one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering and two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs, a year old, to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of a Ahira, son of Enan. These were the offerings of the Israelite leaders for the dedication of the altar when it was anointed. 
12 silver plates, 12 silver sprinkling bowls and 12 gold dishes. Each silver plate weighed 130 shekels and each sprinkling bowl 70 shekels. Altogether, the silver dishes weighed 2,400 shekels according to the sanctuary shekel. The 12 gold dishes filled with incense weighed 10 shekels each according to the sanctuary shekel. And altogether, the gold dishes weighed 120 shekels. The total number of animals for the burnt offering came to 12 young bulls, 12 rams and 12 male lambs a year old, together with their grain offerings. 12 male goats were used for the sin offering, and the total number of animals for the sacrifice of a fellowship offering came to 24 oxen, 60 rams, 60 male goats, 60 male lambs a year old. These were offerings for the dedication of the altar after it was anointed. When Moses entered the tent of the meeting to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him from between the two cherubim above the atonement cover on the Ark of the Covenant Law. In this way, the Lord spoke to him. Hebrews chapter 13. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are ill-treated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honoured by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, Never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, not by eating ceremonial foods, which is of no benefit to those who do so. We have an altar from which those who minister at the tabernacle have no right to eat. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name and do not forget to do good to share with others. For with such sacrifices God is pleased. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honourably in every way. I particularly urge you to pray so that I may be restored to you soon. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip with you everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to bear with my word of exhortation, for in fact I have written to you quite briefly. I want you to know that our brother Timothy has been released. If he arrives soon, I will come with him to see you. Greet all your leaders and all the Lord's people. Those from Italy send you their greetings. Grace be with you all.